Hey, welcome back. Today we're looking at Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, chapters 11 through 13, the beginning of the creature's story. But before we jump into our study, I'd like to thank my patrons over on Patreon for supporting me and for helping to create great videos like this. And if you haven't already checked it out, I recommend going over to my Patreon page and seeing the kind of resources I have over there for you, including guided questions to help you with books like Frankenstein. When we last left off, Victor was on a walking tour in Charmonix, and he was on a glacier when all of a sudden, here came his creature bounding up to him. And the creature demanded that Victor listen to his story. And so after some argument back and forth, Victor agrees to sit down and hear what the creature has to say. So for the next several chapters, we're going to be looking at the creature's story, starting here in chapter 11. He begins by describing the vagueness and the confusion of his first impressions. He was created full size in this world, but given no one to guide him. And so he had to stumble around without understanding what he was seeing or hearing or sensing, until finally he found himself out in the woods beside a brook. And so we watch the creature struggle for survival, yes, but there are also several aspects of his character that are developed here, his personality. Very quickly, we establish how very intelligent he is. He learns and explores in his world, figuring things out by trial and error and by scientific method. When he discovers a fire that was left by some travelers, he learns how to cultivate the fire how to use it to improve the quality of some of his food, how to use it to keep him warm, but not to burn him. And he does all of this through trial and error, through testing, and through uh, examination, experimentation. And as his story goes on, we will see just how very capable he is. Obviously, by this point, he's able to tell a very articulate and crafted verbal story. So he's going to master language. Not only that, but he keeps dropping references to Milton's Paradise Lost, which shows that he has an understanding of arts and literature already. All this in a very short window of time. Aside from all the details that demonstrate clearly the creature's intelligence, we also have his appreciation of beauty, which is a key idea. The creature, when it first sees the moon, sits there and enjoys the beauty of the natural world, the beauty of the moon and the beauty of the night. He goes on to talk about the impact that bird song has on him. And as he goes on, we're going to see many other instances in which he relishes beauty and admires things that are beautiful. Of course, this is going to be particularly hard on him because he himself is hideous. After cultivating and keeping this fire for several days, he realizes that his food supply is running out and he will have to abandon his fire. And so again, he shows his intelligence by making a risk assessment. Do I give up this good thing because I need something else? And ultimately he chooses to leave behind his fire and travel. He then begins to interact with humanity. He comes across an old man in a hut who runs away in terror, but leaves behind his very nice breakfast. Later he wanders into a town and he's in awe of the beauty of this town, but the people there react with absolute horror to his appearance. Some of them run away, some of them try to fight him, until eventually he is driven away and must run. He manages, however, to hide himself in a little shed attached to a small cottage. It's a tiny shed, he's barely able to sit up in it, but at least it provides him protection and nobody knows he's there. And it's definitely more comfortable than lying out in the woods in the rain. But also there's another added benefit that he discovers soon after. The cottage is owned by a lovely little family, an old man and his two children. And the creature, by observing them, begins to realize that they're really a very noble and beautiful family. Now, he can't understand what they're doing, but he observes each of their actions and attempts to learn by observation what they are trying to accomplish. That evening, he sees the beauty of the family, their character through their facial expression and interactions, even though he doesn't understand anything about speech yet. And he's touched by them. In chapter 12, it details how over the next while, next long period of time, the creature is observing the family. He stays in his hiding, and at first he steals food from them, but he begins to realize more and more what kind of people they are, and he begins to understand their existence better. He sees that they have a sadness about them that at first he doesn't understand and is not going to be clear until later, but he does begin to recognize that some of their sorrow comes from their poverty. In spite of their nobility, they are very, very poor and they have to work very hard to survive. He also begins to pick up on their language with each other and the fact that they are communicating by the sounds that they make. 
And so then he begins to listen carefully and attempt to imitate them and also to try to understand what they say. But it's very difficult just by watching and listening to understand them. He has a little hole that was part of a former window of the little cottage that, that opens into his little shed. And so he's able to peer through and watch them through the evening. He feels more and more sympathy for them and he decides to try to help them out. And so he starts doing favors for them in the middle of the night, cutting wood for them so that the young man doesn't have to, or doing things around the cottage to the point that they begin to think that there's some good spirit watching over them. He also discovers the beauty of music and the art of reading from them. These things are difficult for him to understand, but because of his great intellect and his powers of observation, he begins to piece together what's going on. He recognizes that the language that is spoken is also able to be written down and preserve a message. But he cannot read and he can barely speak at this point. He also again appreciates the beauty of music and observes the beauty of the family and their interactions, their care for each other, and it stirs the positive feelings in his own heart. He admires them and sympathizes with them and feels their feelings along with them, and he wishes that he could be part of their family. But one day he discovered the reason why everyone ran away from him and hates him so much, when he looks down into a pool of water and he sees his own face, this hideous face, this creature who has, is so attuned to beauty and to the, the beautiful, sees how very hideous he comes across to other people. I had admired the perfect forms of my cottagers, their grace, beauty, and delicate complexions. But how was I terrified when I viewed myself in a transparent pool? At first I started back, unable to believe that it was indeed I who was reflected in the mirror. And when I became fully convinced that I was in reality the monster that I am, I was filled with the bitterest sensations of despondence and mortification. Alas, I did not yet entirely know the fatal effects of this miserable deformity. And so at first the creature hates his ugliness, but he decides that he wants to be part of this family, and in order to do so he thinks, well maybe I can just win them over if I can learn to communicate with them, if I can show them my inside and uh, be able to truly convey my need for companionship and love. Maybe they'll understand. They'll be turned off by my ugliness at first, but through my eloquence I'll be able to win them over. And so he comes up with these, this imagined plan that he will learn as much as he possibly can until he's ready, and then he will present himself to them. After doing many kindness, kindnesses to them throughout this long period of time, and, and learning in such a way how to convincingly convey his argument to them. And yet the mystery of the sadness of the cottagers, other than their poverty, eludes him for a long time. Until one day when a young woman appears at their door. Felix, the young man, had always seemed the saddest, but when this young woman appears at the door, he is overjoyed. Apparently this is his lost love. This young Arabian woman named Sabi, who speaks no real English. Felix had fallen in love with her and had hoped to marry her in the past, a story we will hear in future chapters, but he had thought her lost forever to him. And so now, in the reunion, everyone is overjoyed and everyone is happy. This, of course, makes the monster happy to see his friends so happy, but also it provides him with one extra excellent benefit. Because Safi doesn't speak English, she must be taught. And so Felix and Agatha go through a very slow and careful teaching of this young woman how to speak English, and also how to read English. And of course the monster observes all of this and uses this to help himself learn. And in fact he learns much more quickly than Safi. Felix reads with Safi this book called Ruins of Empires, which talks about all of these different governments all over the world throughout history. And he carefully explains it to Safi to help her learn how to read and write in, in English and speak in English. And the monster not only benefits from this by getting an education of language, but he also gets an education of civilizations. He learns all kinds of things about how people have interacted with each other throughout history. He says, These wonderful narrations inspired me with strange feelings. Was man, indeed, at once so powerful, so virtuous, and magnificent? yet so vicious and base. He appeared at one time a mere scion of the evil principle, and at another to be all that can be conceived of noble and godlike. To be a great and virtuous man appeared the highest honor that can befall a sensitive being. To be base and vicious 
as many on record have been, appeared the lowest degradation, a condition more abject than that of the blind mole or harmless worm. For a long time I could not conceive how one man could go forth to murder his fellow, or even why there were laws and governments. But when I heard details of vice and bloodshed, my wonder ceased, and I turned away with disgust and loathing." And so he learned something about how society works, what people value, what is noble, and what is base. And he also learns that some of the most valued things in humanity are your family, and your family line, and also your wealth. And here he is, a creature with, who sprang into existence without any knowledge of where he came from, and who has absolutely nothing. And what was I? Of my creation and creator I was absolutely ignorant, but I knew that I possessed no money, no friends, no kind of property. I was, besides, endued with a figure hideously deformed and loathsome. I was not even of the same nature as man. I was more agile than they, and could subsist on a coarser diet. I bore the extremes of heat and cold with less injury to my frame. My stature far exceeded theirs. When I looked around, I saw and heard of none like me. Was I then a monster, a blot upon the earth, from which all men fled, and whom all men disowned? And the monster is so frustrated by the fact that he seems to be cut off from the rest of humanity. He is different and therefore cannot be accepted. He can never expect the kind of love that he sees between Felix and Safi. He can never expect to be close to beauty. And he also learns about family life and about the way families are created. And he says, but where were my friends and relations? No father had watched my infant days. No mother had blessed me with smiles and caresses. Or if they had, all my past life was now a blot, a blind vacancy in which I distinguish nothing. For my earliest remembrance, I had been as I then was in height and proportion. I had never yet seen a being resembling me or who claimed any intercourse with me. What was I? The question again recurred, to be answered only with groans. And so the creature, although he is gaining in knowledge and he is growing in his appreciation of beauty, watching these beautiful cottagers, and all of these wonderful lessons only through juxtaposition and contrast make him feel more loathsome and more unlovable. The creature still has a lot more to learn, but we'll pick up with his continued story next time. Thanks for watching! You can click to subscribe or follow the link to my Patreon page where you can find more resources on Frankenstein and other works of literature. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.